All right, so we got to this parking lot in Eustis. The repair people know that we're here and hopefully they're gonna show up. It's Tuesday the 29th at 1130. It should be like a one or two hour repair. I'll give them three just in case something goes wrong. Tomorrow we have to leave the campground and if we still haven't gotten this repaired, it's gonna be really, really challenging to, problem, to, yeah. to do stuff. Really, we'd like to move on. We've, we've been here two, week, two weeks there, plus the week it took to get from Louisiana over to Dallas and then figure out that we couldn't boondock because it was just too much work and too difficult. We had our water heater break, our internet service go out, her phone broke, our Wi-Fi repeater broke. Within a week, 110 mile an hour winds according to the officials. What is gumbo? We're always looking for water. I don't think we'll be getting any diesel fuel here. Out of Louisiana, into Texas. I think I'm We're probably... Start there. Yeah. I think she's trying to ride it. Well, we see Dallas in the distance now. I got my phone. Truck Camper Magazine reached out to us. We live in a camper. Our expectations aren't too high. It's broken. We should have it solved. So we last left you at Isle du Bois State Park in Texas, and since then we've been moving around a little bit. Hey. You guys are doing some boondocking? Oh, there's another baby one. Also in Texas there's not a ton of, of available boondocking. There is some, but it's usually in the really remote areas. So we did go and explore some boondock areas that were about what hour and a half outside of Dallas. And they were really cool, however they had no cell service. So we had to kind of bail out of there and that's what led us to going to the state park at first. And that also had no cell service. So we decided to call around and we said, you know, what do you guys have for cell service? And this particular place around Lake Bardwell, they said, yep, works pretty well. So we drove, I don't know, hour and a half down there it had decent cell service for both AT&T and Verizon, and we ended up staying there for two weeks. Ooh, what's the name of that place? Highview Point Park by Lake Bardwell is actually um, Army Corps of Engineers campground. Is that a gray blue herring? I think it is. <laughs> or is that a T-Rex? <laughs> what? It is. My dry shoes will not be dry for very long. No, me neither. It's $14 a night if you get a 30 amp, but they didn't have any left, so it was $16 a night. And they have full hookups, which is really nice, but they do have showers, so we use their showers instead. In the last video, we mentioned right at the end that we might have a solution. We should have it solved. But at that point, we weren't quite ready to talk about it because we didn't know if it was going to work out. Some of our friends, Melissa and Angel, who you'll find on social media as Forever Honeymooning. We'll leave a link down in the description. They sent us a message and suggested that we try out Bennett's mobile RV service. We were a little reluctant because we were still trying to figure out how to get official service done from Aldi. So we called Bennett's and asked them if they had the time to do it. Like if they could get us in within, say, a few weeks. And they actually said, sure, we can get you in next week, which was pretty amazing. That was very exciting because that was maybe the first time someone said yes and was willing to help us and they also had nice reviews. So the next step was to call Alda and say hey look we found this place that will do it. Will you work with a non-Alda certified place? And mm -hmm. they said sure well and they said sure let me check with the manager. So we waited till the next day and we got a call back from someone named Chantel from Aldi. She was super super helpful. She approved us using you know, this other service. They really wanted to make sure that we were taken care of and kind of got back on the road. Alda has been really, really good. Uh, I was really impressed with their service. They sent things out quickly. They approved everything. They picked up the phone, all of that stuff. Our real issue was just with, with dealerships. No one wanted to do the work. I finally got into the habit, because I made a lot of phone calls, of just asking like, is this something that you would be willing to attempt? And they just say no. Then we got a lot of people that said we don't deal with anything that involves glycol or antifreeze. As far as we can tell, it's like a one to two hour job. It's a, a pull it out and put it in. So when we were talking to Bennett's, you know, we explained what it was. We told them what the system was, how it worked, where it was located, that it was going to be easy to pull it out. They were basically just going to do a complete unit swap. So the woman that I was speaking to, her name was Bobby. She was super friendly and she said, we've never done it before. I'll need to read the manual a little bit and kind of, you know, brush up on what needs to be done. But sure, we can take care of it. So very confident with it. You know, RVs are not that complicated. We gave Alda the phone number to call Bennett's. They did. They discussed their 
dealer vendor stuff in the background. And I got a call back and said, like, sure, when would you like to schedule it? And I basically said, as soon as possible. We're heading there right now. It's about an hour away. And uh, we're pretty excited because if everything goes well, we should have hot water again today and we should be able to move on. All right, so we got to this parking lot in Eustace. The repair people know that we're here. This truck idles throughout the entire video. Sorry about that. Bennett showed up right on time. And they unloaded all their equipment, including our brand new boiler. It did have one small little dent in it from shipping. First step was to simply unscrew the old one and unmount it from the floor. Disconnect all of the cables and start draining the glycol. There was about three gallons we had to drain using those buckets. We just used one of our cooking pots because it was nice and small and would fit into the cabinet. It took quite a while to drain all of the glycol out Watch your step, there's a gap. I need to fix this gap, it's rather dangerous. Sweet. Like they say on elevators, mind the gap. Mind the gap, you got it. So they pulled the old one out and they needed to start oh, swapping yeah, some of the parts. The Mostly just, I think, one hose that didn't come with the new one. Right here, he's just cutting the zip ties off and getting ready to transfer it over. I noticed that there was a lot of corrosion on that fitting. That one's brand new and clean. So that's why they want you to replace the glycol every two years to prevent the corrosion. With the parts swapped, we can bring the new one inside and start installing it. It's tricky getting it in there. It's a pretty tight squeeze. Luckily, it's a pretty open compartment and it's really just a case of dropping it straight in. However, because of the hoses and some of the cables, it's a little bit of a challenge because he had to move some things out of the way to make it fit. I climb under here with the camera. I'm gonna try to help pull some of the hoses out of the way. get the vent hose out of the way, but you can see it's getting hung up on one of the heater hoses. So we got all that stuff out of the way and he starts to set it in place and get ready to start securing it to the floor. That's right where it was before right there. So here he is just screwing it down to the floor. It's a pretty simple install which is nice. Just have to tighten up the propane lines. Snug them down a little bit. No, uh, no pipe dope or anything needed? Nope. Nice. And the next step is to do a manometer test, which is to check for a leak down of the propane. They use one of the orifices on the stove to hook up this manometer, which I just learned about. So now I'm going to go out and turn the propane on so we can pressurize the system. It should be on. Then do you need me to shut it back off? Uh, I, will, I will in just a second. Yes. Okay. All right, you can, uh, you can shut it off. And now that we have pressure, I'll go back out and shut it off. What was this called? A manometer? Manometer, yes. Manometer, okay. Uh, get it. The the pressure of the whole system, leave that valve open so it stays pressured with the system. Uh -huh. And then lower the pressure of the system down to five inches of water column. And that opens any diaphragms or anything that may have maybe uh, engaged to trap it. Interesting. That way you can tell if you have a leak anywhere in the system. It has a safety on it. I think you have to be on ignite and then push in. So this one may be closed then. Yeah, I think it is. Yep. Oh, wow. Shoot. That's what it is. Yeah, I need to hold this one open while I do it. Yeah. You want me to go? So, yeah, we got to turn it back home now. Okay. So, because of the safety knob on the stove, the gas wasn't actually on, and we had to repeat the process of turning the propane on and then back off again. So, what do you, you wait a while? Yeah, you're supposed to do it for about three minutes. 
It's already been about a minute while I was talking here, so I'll do it for about okay. two. And you just, how much of a drop, any drop at all? Right, it shouldn't drop at all. Okay. If it drops at all, then you have a leak somewhere in your system, then it's the trouble of tra tracking, tracking it down. Right. It's good so far. Yeah. It's like it went up just a hair. Why is that? Uh, it's normally the valve on your tank is not shutting off completely. If it continues to go up. Okay. So like residual. When it's just a hair, that was just pressure equalizing out of some diaphragm in one of the lines or something. Oh, all right. Uh, but if it continues to rise, then that means one of the valves on your tank is not shutting off. It's huh, still allowing okay. pressure to go into the system. But yeah, that's been about three minutes now. So you don't have a leak. That's good. Uh, if passes the test. Now that the propane lines are tested and nothing's leaking, we can move on with the installation. Going to uncoil some of the hoses and reconnect them to the drain fittings. There are two drain fittings for the Aldi. One is for glycol and one is for water. In the event of an overpressure situation for either the glycol or the water system, the pressure will vent out and drain onto the ground. Was it just push onto a nipple? I guess it just pushes down in there. And you know, into a hole? Yeah, into a hole. Okay. There's a rubber thing. Oh, this is, oh it's a clamp. Okay, I can undo that clamp and stick them further through. Off, so push in With everything reconnected, now we just have to fill up the glycol reservoir and bleed out all of the air from the system. We removed about three or three and a half gallons and added about four to four and a half gallons of fluid back into the system, which means there's about one gallon of glycol left in the old Aldi system. So it's installed, it's working. We've been uh, doing the glycol and I got it. I got it on right now and it's running. I'm gonna make sure it heats up and we have hot water and there's nothing else broken. But I think we're in good shape. It took about two and a half hours. Started at 1220, it's now 250. And it sounds like nothing went wrong, which is very good. So hopefully we're all set now. As the air bleeds out of the system, we just occasionally top it off with glycol. What a huge difference having hot water makes. It's been three weeks without it and it's really nice to have it back. I'm finally able to do dishes with hot water, which of course makes things go a lot faster, especially when you're dealing with greasy pots and pans. Sasha's able to take a shower and wash her hair in our own camper again. It's taken a lot of phone calls and a lot of time and it didn't go how we expected, but we got it done and it was well worth all of the effort. I wanna give a big thank you to Aldi for all of their help and Bennett's mobile RV service for fitting us into their schedule. So I know I'm happy about this. It's a huge relief to have our hot water again, but let's see what Sasha has to say. Yes? What do you think? It's so nice to take a shower in our own camper, so I'm pretty excited. Thank you for following us on our journey of getting our water heater fixed along with the other things. We hope you enjoyed this video series. And I'm gonna keep on showering because it's getting cold. See you next time. Bye. Bye. We should have it solved. <laughs>